over. Last mission, last mission. The final boss mode. Yeah, yeah, what's good, yo? Welcome to another episode of Real Talk, where, as always, if shit's real, we talk about it. I'm your host for tonight, Pasco P, the New England represent, and as always, I got my man with me. I'm gonna let him introduce himself. Yo, what it do? It's Shutterworth the Guy, aka the GOAT artist, LB, Lotta Del Boss, the Soul Wars creator, RingGangRadio.com in the building. Yes, sir, Ring Gang in the house forever and always. And as always, I got my other man with me. I'm gonna let him introduce himself. Hey yo, what's good, bros? Your boy King P, Bodega P, Bodega Boxing in the building, Ring Gang Radio forever. Let's get it. Hey, Bodega P, straight from the sewer, except he's above ground today. You know what I'm saying? You know, taking a break, and you know, we were early just complaining about the shitty, shitty state of our football teams today. You know, it is what it is, man. You know, I mean, it's a, it's unfortunate. That's what you. That's what we have to do on our days off. But you know, it is what cancel it is. Cancel New York football, please. Let's cancel it. <laughs> Cancel both teams, nigga. Yeah. Cancel my team, too. <laughs> it's sad that a fucking Buffalo team is running New York right now. Just like Buffalo is running fucking New York hip-hop right now. The fuck? This is bullshit. Yeah, tw- yeah, 2020 is a nightmare. And the NFL is no... Boom, 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 boom. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, 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 that shit just took me <laughs> took me all the way fucking like surprise surprise thing. You stupid as fuck, yo. <laughs> but uh, but dig though, you know, this is a recap show. You know, we're gonna talk about all the bots that happened yesterday. And my goodness, it's been a while since I've watched almost twelve hours of boxing continuous, man. It was it, it was glory. My goodness, you know, I've never watched so much football like you know in a hot minute. It took me fucking back. <laughs> but uh, of course like the you know pretty much the magnum opus of the whole boxing weekend uh, from yesterday was the was the charlo double letter pay-per-view um six fights five world title fights four legit world title fights you know and uh it was it was with a 30-minute intermission and it was uh it, overall it was a good show so, like the first, the first part, we'll talk about the first half of the pay per view, which was main evented by uh, Jamal Charlo versus uh, Sergey Derevyanchenko for Charlo's WBC middleweight title. Um, but before I guess we go into the main event, though, what did you guys think of the undercard for that shit? The what for the Charlo the uh, Jamal card? Yeah, Charles. Yeah, yeah, for the Charles Derevyanchenko one, the first. That part. Was oh, I thought that was good. Shit. That it was, was good. Lit. Me, me, and LB both agree we like the first half undercard more than the second half undercard. Yeah, it was like just right. You got you got like an early KO, then you got a good Margarito beat down, but you know action packed second fight, and then you had a good just above under fight of the year from Charlo and. Uh, Derbyanchenko. If it was if it was a regular night of boxing with just those three fights, we would have said it was a good ass night of boxing. Yeah, that's real talk, man. Yeah, like yeah. Although an opener, Casemiro though, I mean he he for, I mean he showed some personality. Like dude was landing fucking dragon uppercuts, tiger uppercuts, nigga. It was just He's like spamming them shits. Just, <laughs> oh you kick, oh you kick, oh you kick. Yeah, I mean dude, dude was like, you know what? I'm in America right now. I'm on pay per view. I'm gonna, I'm gonna give I'm gonna give all these cats a highlight real knockout so they can play back so they can see and after and after he did all that shit you know he talked big shit to to monster in the in the post fight interview motherfucker this and that you know it was like god damn you know that's, that's how you supposed to do man yeah you know I mean yeah you know top Mike made a huge mistake not throwing money behind this fight you know yeah they did don't yeah. get me wrong I mean they got a good consolation prize with the uh I think it was Jason Maloney yeah. You know, which is a good fight too, but yeah. you know, unification will always trump a good fight. Yeah, exactly. Especially with this one, especially with a guy who can punch, who's willing to probably sacrifice himself, throw some punches he shouldn't be throwing in the ring. You know, I, but, I guess they ain't want to give him, you know, no more Asian power. You know. Yeah. <laughs> because it had that Daener um pack last time, and mm-hmm. you know, and it's like they don't want the whole get back storyline. Because I feel like, man. 
Pacquiao and Denaire, you know, they only last days. But this dude coming in like, yeah, yeah. like he's like already like, I right, I know what to do, coach. Yeah, exactly, man. Yeah, so, so yeah. I appreciate that shit. Yeah, Casemiro made himself a start, and now in now in the second fight with Figueroa and Vasquez, you know, Vasquez, Vasquez who's the nephew of Israel Vasquez, who of course, if you're a boxing fan, hardcore, you know, you know who that guy is. Legend. Legend, man. You know, and then of course he, I think he said he was trained by Casamayor too. Of all people, was it Casamayor? Yeah, it was Casamayor. Casamayor. You know, Casamayor. And, you know, that fight. Oh no, you talking uh, about the second no, fight? Second fight, yeah. Oh, okay, yeah, yeah. I was with Damian Vasquez and um, yeah. Brandon Figueroa. Yeah, and I was like, okay. It's a good fight, though. Yeah, it was, though. But one thing about this Figueroa is, man, like, defense it doesn't exist in the, in the vocabulary. Like, you know, you, 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 like, the product can say, okay, look at Brandon, I need some defense. The hell is defense? Oh, you mean punch much more, much more and just hop into punches and punch more, right, Pop? No, no, son. Defense. Don't take punches. Okay, you know that's that, that's really boy why I think they, 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 they talk about in the corner, man. Yeah, well, well, I mean, if if only their if only their defense was as good as their eating habits. Yeah, well, at least <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, at least this figure that seems to be disciplined enough. I mean, their sister who got a lot of attention on social media too is like their conditioning coach or whatever, you know, because she's like a fitness model too. You know, I mean, I don't know where what one. You definitely spend more time with one brother than the other. Yeah, that, that's, that's, <laughs> that's for damn sure. I don't you know. know. You know how like you, you know people have favorites. Yeah, they do. Yeah, I, I don't know, man. Maybe her and Omar was beefing or something, or. You... And and Loki, do you know what? I actually was on the I was on her Instagram, you know, because I was, you know, because she has some nice pictures, and I'm not gonna lie, I'm a man, you know, so what. You know, but there are no pictures of Omar in her pictures like that. Like Brandon and her, yeah, they're all over the place. Omar, nah. <laughs> yeah, so. You know. They must have broke one of her toys or some shit that's kids. <laughs> I don't know. Uh, unless he failed her too many times. It's like, fuck. <laughs> but yo, like, you know, Brandon Figueroa, though, like, do has, in, like, all figures, they all have work rates, they have chins, and they have power, man. Every single one of those, the, the, this difference, you know. Except, you know, they're trying to market dude as a heartbreaker. I'm like, marking him as a fighter. Stop all this sh- bullshit. Like, stop, you know, stop, you know, stop taking pictures of him with color contacts in and shit. Like, nigga is a fighter, bro. He, and, he th- and, he, and he hands out fades. And he handed out a spectacular fade to Vasquez. Man, it'll be... I mean, I was like, Vasquez needs to go, ho- needs to, go to the hospital after that ass whooping. Like, yeah, he for the for the type of fight that Vasquez for the type of effort Vasquez put out because mm-hmm. he was putting hands on Figueroa for, especially them first five six rounds. Yeah, yeah. Just, jabbing his head off, hitting him with lefts, just everything for the type of fucking you know effort he put in. Man, Figueroa beat him down. Yeah, usually people don't fight that good and get and still get beat down like that. Yeah, like Figueroa. I mean, but and uh, honestly, that fight could have ended like two rounds earlier. Like everyone, everyone was like, th- like, "Stop this fight! Pull it out!" Like there is one pull him out. You know, Vasquez was like, "Yeah, yeah, I'm fine." Like dude's eyes were lumped up. Like he had all yeah, the he's, yeah, he, he he's been done. I don't know that that fight could have been stopped like two rounds earlier. You you definitely right on that. Yeah, I was like, I mean, I think I, I think I wait for the guy to collapse. Like, I mean, that's what that, that's what it was looking like for a hot minute. You know, it's like. And finally, the ref was like, "Okay, yes, you know, we'll finally stop it, you know." But yeah, Figueroa, man, like that dude. I mean, he's he's gonna he's 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 a good TV fighter, you know. And one day he'll probably get himself a legitimate world title. But he's also gonna get broke by a puncher one day. Like he can't continue to take all the punishment like he does. I mean, he, he can't eat them. He can't eat the jabs like he does. Like he's he's on the road that Oscar Valdez is is traveled on. Like he, he's. You know that that's the vibe that gets me. Nah, it looks worse with Oscar Valdez because yeah. he's an Olympian and and way more talented. Like Brandon Figueroa looked like he's gonna overachieve, and Oscar Valdez looked like he's underachieved. Agreed. Uh, yeah. Cause look at the type of even for you, this guy box just as good as them, or even better than um. I think what Sosa did against Valdez, and and Valdez struggled, but you know he. I think a ref helped him out at one point. He still got the knockout, but yeah, Brandon Figueroa beat this guy down. Sure did. Sure the fuck did. You know. When when I talk about like you know you put your foot in someone's ass, like 
this is one of those fights. Yes, sir. Yeah, absolutely. Like it, it, it is cumulative, man. Like, that, and, that, and that's a trait of an elite volume puncher, like that. Like, you, you, that's the. I mean, that was that was a that was a cold ass whooping. Like Vasquez is gonna be down for a little bit. <laughs> he needs to be. You know, it's just like you know, and, and like, hey, like I said, that, that dude's gonna be a star. Like, if he if he could actually still make 122, or even even take his talents up to 126. You know, like do 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 will do something at those weights. You know, it's like, you know, I mean, yeah, Figueroa, man. Like, I mean, that was a that was a spectacular fade, man. Yeah, you, know, you had the quick fade, and you had the long drawn out fade, and then you get to the main event, where pretty much everyone is just like everyone is like frothing at the mouth for, you know, with the most power <laughs> and, and, and Sergey Kirby and Chenko, man. And yeah, the, them them two cats were throwing hands, bro. Like, I mean, point blank. Yeah, like, you know. Well, no, they had they had the, they had the first couple of rounds. They're kind of feeling out, but once Duran Chico was like, you know, I can get inside. It was it, it was well, just nah, Charlo was throwing hands from the get go. Is Darian Chico kind of took four rounds to yeah, he took like four or five rounds to just get everything going. And then when he did, yeah, he was putting hands on Charlo definitely. Yeah, and Charlo was dishing him back. Yeah, they were. It was like you know, it, it, it was beautiful. Like I mean, one and one thing with the Bachelor though, he wasn't keeping that consistent jab in his face. So he was lying during chicken at, at, in spots to actually pull him on the ropes and then and then tee off on him. Like you know, boom, 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 boom. You know, it's just like and and I'm surprised. Them feints, them feints was setting it up. Like those yeah. feints were fucking Charlo up. Like anytime. Like Durianchenko would do those feints. It's like Charlo would hesitate. He'd fuck up his rhythm, mm-hmm. and then Durianchenko would be on him like flies on shit, bro. Like bullying him into the ropes, uppercuts. If he was able to damn start off a little sooner, it's like maybe the second round or even the third round. Mm-hmm. You know, I, he would have been a lot better for it. But um, yeah, I still think he gave a good good effort. He, you know. He won about four rounds clean to me. Yeah, but, so uh, here. Carlo was just too much for dude. Yeah, too Damn, much. I, y'all, y'all were more generous than me. I don't think I gave him four rounds. I think gave him like two or three. I could see, I could see three. I don't think two. He he definitely won more than two rounds. Yeah, he definitely did. Because yeah, me and Key Soprano, we was like, when we heard the 118, 110, we was like, what the fuck? Like, yeah, what he it, watch? It wasn't that fight. That, yeah, like that means it wasn't competitive, and it sure as hell was. Yeah, yeah, it wasn't. I'm not saying it wasn't no 115, 113. Nah, I'm not saying that. It wasn't no draw. It wasn't no. Charlo no, no, clearly I you. I got won. I got, I got you. I got you. But like, I don't. I don't. I can't see you know Dervianchenko getting less than three rounds or more than four. Exactly, you know, because he hurt Charlo too, and then it's like there was moments where Charlo wanted would get bullied the whole round and then he'll land a good shot or two at the end and it's like I feel like niggas were giving him those yeah, rounds. He, yeah, yeah, he was he was, he was stealing those rounds. Yeah. Then you know that then that comes down to preference cuz I look at it like if somebody's beating your ass for two and a half minutes and then you know you get caught with a couple hard ones. I don't think that unless a dude buckles or you know Yeah, no, but he, but he got hurt like Trevor and Chico got hurt after and, and at the end of one of the rounds I remember he, he got oh, yeah. hurt yeah yeah, so, he got hurt like he, twice. yeah so I'm like you hurt him at the end so I'm gonna give him that round like I'm gonna give Charlo that round where you hurt him yeah I'm actually surprised yeah, there was some rounds that happened where Charlo didn't hurt him he'll just land a good one and it's like Okay. Yeah, I'm actually yeah. surprised that Charlo didn't drop the red trickle not even once. Well, he came close. If if the I think it was at the fourth round. If the bell, if if the round didn't end, he definitely would have been dropped because his like he buckled and did like almost like he was ready to go. Yeah, you know. Yeah, yeah he did have him out ready to go one time. Yeah, and then what's worse though is like if Durant is taking a lot of damage to his eyes too. Like in the Triple G fight, he had eye damage. This one it was just as bad too. Like yeah, you know, I, that was one thing I noticed. I'm like, was it the same eye or it was the other eye? I'm like, damn, like because I, I noticed like I'm like, wait, didn't he get? Didn't his eye start bust get busted open against Triple G and now it's busted open again? I'm like, uh oh. Yeah, you know, but you know, both eyes because I think it was his right eye that got that had like the bad cut and everything like that. You know, and then yeah, I mean, I, I, it, 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 salute to his corner for keeping him in the fight though, for actually not you know for his eyes not getting like swollen shut. And, or or in or deep cuts, you know, but his eyes were in a, in a crazy state. 
I'm like, yo, this dude needs to go get an eye exam thoroughly to make sure nothing got detached or something, or he's not seeing double. You know, I mean, I mean, Charlo's jab, though, when he was throwing them, like, you know, his, his, his Jordan Tickle's face was getting busted up. You spamming that left, like the yeah. hooks, mm-hmm. the body shots, the damn jabs, like there was. It was such a good one-handed performance at times that I'm like, damn, how could he not knock this dude down? Like, yeah. I mean, Jeremy I couldn't believe it. He was unloading the sink, everything. Yeah, he's, I mean, Sergey's tough. I, I thought he could have at the end, but at the end, I'm like, ah, once I realized he wasn't putting his foot on the gas, I'm like, yeah, yeah, he's just gonna. Yeah, go. I felt like the Derby and Chico was won the 12th round. He did. I, I thought he did too. I mean, that's why. That's why I was like. You know, that's why it's like, yeah, this is definitely one of those fights where, you know, he needed he needed that last round in case, in case this fight was close on some judge's card. Yeah, I mean, he got his ass beat the whole, like, I felt like at the end of the fight, I'm like, damn, dude got his ass beat. Yeah, he he, he did. That's what I was saying. Like, when I text you, I was like, that was the most brutal 116, 112 type of fight ever. Like, <laughs> I've never seen a fight so competitive, but so, like, Still a good ass whooping, like yeah. In, in, in the in the in the beginning of the first half of the fight, it was the jabs, and then in the second half, it was the damn uppercuts, both right and left ones. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I mean, yeah. Durant Jacob just ate, ate too much. He which ate- is what I said. Which is I said what I said. Um, in the um. You know, in the pre-fight talk, that he was gonna, that Drevianchenko was gonna put himself in the line of fire to get those uppercuts, especially when he's coming in, you know, crouching down, bull rushing him. Like I, I, I knew some uppercuts were coming. Yeah, man. Like, and and, 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 uh, and Triple Go, he needed to do that. Like, because literally, there was no real, there was no strategy, there was no out. He couldn't be an outfighter for against Charlo because he would have gotten killed. <laughs> so it was just like he had to do it. It's just like a triple D fight. He, in order for him to pull up, yeah. And, and Charlo was too athletic, separating the distance. Right. This is why we that time with um. Oh my bad. What you were saying? I was like, that's why I also, I also noticed that Drake did also like in the. He also didn't give Charlo like the angles all that much. Like he'd give him that sometimes, but he wasn't keeping him on his toes with the angles. And then that, and that was like the biggest part of his game. You know, and I don't know. Although a different fighter, that, that's what I was about to say. Like, yeah. remember that interview where Jervianchenko was saying Canelo would be the easier fight than Charlo? Mm-hmm. And a lot of people was like, "Get the fuck out of here!" Yeah. And I'm like, yeah, he's it's right, true. actually. <laughs> it's true. I don't know why people because people well, just looking at because people be on because people think every everything should be easy for, for Charlo. And then I'm should be easy for Canelo and Charlo ain't shit and he should lose, but. Like if, if that would have been Dervianchenko in there with Canelo, that'd have probably been a PBC draw. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> but first of all, like Canelo, don't be having the work rate like Charlo. Right. And, I don't know about all that now. I'm not about the PBC draw part, but I get it. Okay. Nah, I'm thinking like that would have been a closer. We would have had a closer fight if we would have had Dervianchenko Canelo. We would have got the same type of fight we had with Golovkin, Jacobs, and Colke. Mm-hmm. Yeah, because that's the thing. None of these guys, their footwork on it. First of all, they're a smaller stature fighters, so Dervianchenko could bully them a lot better than a guy like Charlo, who's damn six feet. Right. Well, it, well in Koke's case, though, Koke was actually giving Dervianchenko more problems than Dervianchenko was giving Koke problems. Though, I mean, Koke was. Yeah, different. yeah, especially at the yeah. end. Yeah, exactly. So, but uh, he, yeah, that's he, all he, I'm he saying. Did. Like. like Dervianchenko's footwork, that shit was like ne- negated by, by Charlo's length. Yeah. And his athleticism was like, he he kind of just read the movements, the little subtle movements. He knew what he was going to turn, so he had fired a jab. The only thing that Dervianchenko did to fuck Charlo up was those feints. Exactly. But other than that, like, he couldn't get on him like he did uh, Jacobs and Golovkin. Yeah. And Jacobs is a big dude too, but I don't think Jacobs is like. I don't think he could. Use, I don't think he uses his jab like Charlo does. No, I mean if with Jacobs, oh, yeah. if anything with Jacobs, if Jacobs uses his size more. Yeah. Like, you know, Jacobs yeah. doesn't necessarily use it all that. Yeah. Well. Oh, well, and Jacob, and unlike unlike Jacobs, uh, uh, unlike Jacobs, Charlo doesn't cuff his shots. Yeah. <laughs> yes, that's true too. Jacobs be damn cuffing his shots and. And slapping sometimes, and 
It's like he tries to fight like a big dude, but he doesn't. Mm-hmm. Yeah, or yeah, exactly. regardless, still, still a good fight, you know. Not yeah. fight of the year, but a good fight. It was damn close. I mean, you know, uh, for one thing, for sure, Dorian Checo earned himself some tune-ups. Like, you know, I know one of the one of the tweets that I read this morning said his manager says he wants to ease him into the 154 division. Uh, that's a bad idea to me. I, I think that's a bad idea. I don't think he's gonna be able to squeeze his body down. The, the yeah, extra six pounds. An nah. older an older fighter going down in weight is never a good thing. Especially coming off of a hard fights like yeah, yeah, four no. of them now. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, cause, uh, yeah. One, one, I mean, I, I still think he'd have a better shot trying to pick up a middleweight title there than at one fifty four. One fifty four. This is a guy like if he like I would go after Mungia, really. Oh, so you want him to die? <laughs> no, I'm no, saying hell no. No, no I'm talking about like after after a tune up, of course. Yeah. Oh, yeah. No, I, I feel like Durian Chinko would have a better shot at guys like. Andre and um, Mungia than he would trying to go down to 154 and might not be all that healthy and has to fight big guys anyway. Right, yeah, because 154 is, I mean, number one, they probably have probably the best, the, the, the most number of prime, physically prime fighters in boxing today. Like, seriously, like, like every, anyone from like one to like 15 will probably give you an ass whooping you won't believe if you're not on point. <laughs> So and that, and that's in, in, in yeah, because at one fifty four, who he's gonna fight where he has a better shot? Like, I think he'll lose to Jamel Charlo. Um, Cass- Cassiano does his game better. Yeah, I mean, pretty much. I mean, Tashira's probably the only champion I give him a shot against uh, actually beating. And Tashira him. That's if you just disregard the weight drain. Yeah, exactly. And Tashira, we, we don't even know. Shit, he might. Well, he could probably beat her, but I mean. I, I, wouldn't, I wouldn't even say that. I wouldn't even know now. <laughs> yeah, I wouldn't, I wouldn't even say that. I think her would beat him. But the way her looked last time. Yeah, because I mean, her decided he wants to be a boxer now instead of, you know, instead of being Margarito 2.0, you know, and, which was his bread and butter. But, you know. Yeah, yeah, her, 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 her. I would keep him at 160 and, oh. and just, you know, get him some easier fights and then try to work his way back up. Yeah, I mean, I mean, Duke can still become a champion, but they have to now at this point. They have to preserve him because he's like 34 right now. He's he's 13 and three. You know, he basically he's, he's, he's his record is to the point where although he's only lost the top fighters, he's getting to that point where you have to either give him some tune ups, like at least two, you know, or you're gonna turn him into a journeyman. You know, so I mean, yeah, he he's already kind of there now. Like even leading up to this fight, yeah, I was gonna say we were saying that like, hey, look, you know, the Golovkin fights were tough. You know, the Jacobs fight was tough. Call okay, like he already had three tough fights and only won one of them. Right. So So now he's had four tough fights and still only won one of them. So it's like. So yeah, you know they they, they they gotta find some middleweight jobbers. You know, to feed them. like don't 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 let them fuck around with 154. 154 will just put some more miles that he just simply can't afford to get right now on his body. And I think he might lose his durability. Like, yeah, I mean his eyes. I mean you see his eyes like he's getting busted up now. Like you know, you know scar tissue builds up in the boxers, man. You know, and like he's he, if he doesn't get knocked out, he will get stopped because of cuts because his eyes are like in this back to that fight have just been appalling, really. Like the the ref the ref in the Golovkin fight did his career a disservice mm-hmm. because if he would have just lost by you know the TKO when Golovkin cut him yeah he probably remember how they had the bullshit was it could have been it was a headbutt when everybody saw it was a punch yeah mm-hmm. they would have probably put that and took some mileage off his career he would have never got thrown through the ringer, the grinder th- throughout that fight, even though, you know, it was, it was another fight where, you know, he could have won, but he would have been a lot fresher and, and career would probably be different. Yeah, all, although uh, all I'm going to say is um, everybody still, a lot of people still thought he would give Char- Charlo a challenge, so I'm not ready to fully accept the, oh, he was put through the meat grinder, although I'm not saying that that's false. I mean, we all said at the first episode, nigga, what the fuck? <laughs> yes, so I'm not going to use it. I know. Like, it's, still, it's still a good win. I mean, don't get it. Yeah, I know, but I don't want to use it as a, like, an excuse to possibly, like, deteriorate Charlo's win. Like, some people are doing. 
Nah, yeah. I mean we we know he was fighting a battle tested, you know, possibly worn, you know, top contender. I, I feel I feel like everybody's like going from one extreme to the other. It's either oh well, well, um, Derevian Chico was put through the grinder, or or. Charlo beat the shit out of Derevianchenko way worse than Triple G. I'm like, oh boy, here we go. Yeah, but no, but but here's here's my only my last thing about. Yeah, I told you that was gonna happen. So I mean, yeah, yeah, exactly. But my last thing about this is, um, for for Charlo Derevianchenko, like there's a reason why that fight was not the main event because the stakes simply were not that high enough for it to be a main event. Yeah. And the fact that people were after the fight was like, oh, um, Charlo should fight Canelo to fight Golovkin. I was like, yeah, tell me when the fights are going to be made. When is this <laughs> move like that? This is the, that's the exact reason why it's not made because no because there's, there's nothing that victory does not move anything in terms of division. Like I mean, Charlo will still remain champion. He's probably I mean, he's not going to he's not going to look for this fight cuz he's not going to go to the zone. And you know, we'll see him versus Eubank Jr. on the next PBC pay-per-view. That's pretty much what the, that's what it is. <laughs> I mean, that should be a good action fight, but I rather him fight Andre. Like, if you're not gonna get Canelo and Golovkin, get Andre. Yeah, I'm, I, I'm, I'm cool with that. Either Canelo, Andre, or Triple G. Like Eubanks is a good little action scrap. No, I don't, I don't want, I don't want no goddamn Eubanks. But, but no, what I'm saying is, it's a lateral move. It ain't nothing. I mean, because Eubanks is damn near as worn out as Dominchenko. <laughs> He's getting there too, and that's the thing because PBC's middleweights are—they're running kind of thin, you know. In terms, and what of, big win does uh, Eubanks have? He doesn't, but he's Eubank. <laughs> yeah, that's what I'm saying. It's like even Derby and Trinkle had the Cole K win, you know. Andre has that too. It's like Eubanks is kind of like it just be like a good little action fight, but it doesn't do nothing. I mean, Eubanks has a DeGale win. Has the DeGale uh, beat DeGale. That's pretty much his biggest win so far. Yeah, so does Caleb Truex. <laughs> yeah. And he has, a, he has a more... Look, like, look. It comes a point in time where certain fighters, after you beat them, you're not going to get the same credit you deserve. Mm-hmm. Like, for Derby and Chenko, like, that's it now. Like, after Charlo beat him, like, unless he gets another solid win, he kind of gets rebuilt up. He's not gonna be the same for your resume as it was before. Exactly. And, and Eubanks is and 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 um um you know and that, that goes for a lot of guys once they get put through the ringer. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you know, so yeah, like yeah, at the end of the day, like Charlo did better than you know his predecessors, but you know, he still had a tough fight. He still got hurt. Mm-hmm. So it's like it was part of the blueprint, like, but it wasn't. But it still was a little bit. So I mean, <laughs> I get it. I get it. Yeah, like you know, he, he like you know, although everybody else needed knockdowns to win their fights with Derby and Chenko, Charlo didn't. It, but then he never dropped the guy. So I mean, it's a, a damn if you do, damn if you don't type of thing. Yeah, it's it's not. I'm you know, I always thought Charlo was that dude at one sixty. It just, he got to prove it against somebody really on his level. Yeah, I mean, this I, is a, I, absolutely. I always thought he gave the top fighters at 160 um, would give them a good fight. It's just uh, I wasn't going to accept him just living off the J Rock fight forever. Right. Yeah, because that, that's how they promote him too. I can because I can tell you I remember when I went to the at the Barclays in 2018. Um, they had the. Uh, like the press fight conference for um, like when Charlo and uh, both Charlos fought on the same night with Harrison and Korobov, or at the time it was, what's his name? But anyway, um, I remember I was talking to some of the guys there that were like just, you know, a part of the event and just mingling and stuff. And like, they would talk about how like, they were boasting how everybody was running away from Jamal. Like how how Golovkin didn't want to fight him. How how um, Danny Jacobs t- ran from him. Like, they were like talking that big cash shit. And I'm just like, I fucks with Charlo, he's legit. But I feel like we're just letting him live off the J-Rock fight forever. And that was two years ago. 
Yeah, I think now I think no, everyone's like, okay, we, he could beat Durvanchenko. Let's see him in with a top middleweight. So it's gonna be like, I think people are gonna uh, people will either will face someone that they perceive as tough, or the, or you know, because the backlash is gonna come. Because everyone knows if you start finding someone that they think is not on your level, you know, the backlash always comes. It never. Yeah, fails. that's why the, the Eubanks fight is like a lateral, almost a regression move, like. Like it needs to be Andre or Mungia, somebody that could move his career forward. Like Eubanks, Eubanks yeah. ain't it. Like yeah, Eubanks ain't it. Dan, Liam Williams ain't it. Like yeah, I, I don't even want. I don't even. I don't even want to see who who are his uh, his top five contenders that he could be facing at that. Point. Yeah, I, I I looked at the rankings at 160 and Slim Pickens. I'll say that. <laughs> even my, even uh, uh, my, my Rota, uh, Murata, yeah, Murata would be a better opponent for uh, Charlo now. Yeah, at least he could. At least he could punch. Dervianchenko, you know, average power. He has so many other things that's going for him, but the matchup wise, they just didn't work for Charlo. Them physical dimensions be a bitch to overcome, man. Yeah, yeah, so yeah. I mean, pretty Especially much. Especially you know how to use them. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, honestly, if we, if, if we can get if, if we can get Munguia, I mean, Munguia still has a zero, you know. So, I mean, is still a factor that Charlo could be. Okay, you know, I'm facing a big Mexican who is my size, probably even bigger, you know. So, let me see what I can do with him. You know? And then, you know, when he wins, you know, the whole Canelo has to get payback from Mexico angle could work. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, that's that's what they did with the Kirkland fight. Oh yeah, yeah. I mean, Kirkland Bob- went over there and beat this shit out of Angulo, and then you know, they, they made sure uh, Kirkland wasn't fucking with Ann no more, Ann Wolf no more. And then they're like, yeah, yeah, we'll fight him. <laughs> yeah, yeah. He, but but uh, you can't say he's not that good anymore. So um, um, he's still in his prime. He he beat Tapia. Uh, 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 knowing yeah. damn well we don't take his man serious unless he got Ann Wolf in his corner. Exactly, man. <laughs> so, so yeah. I mean, great, great, great. Uh, uh, three, three fight card. Yeah. Now, in front thing too, people really complain about the intermission. Did everyone have a problem with the intermission? Yeah. Uh, I mean, I, I mean, what about it? The intermission itself. I, I know my stream went down, but that's about it. Yeah. Now, some people thought it was too long. Some people was like, some people didn't care because you know they were able to do some other shit in the you know in the intro. Other people's like, you know, I don't want to hear these two cats talk about whatever. God knows what we're talking about. Me, I just turned about. I mean, well, no, I mean, I, I downed two beers. I mean, it was a little break. Like, it was cool, I guess. But I guess if you're going to have an intermission, you need to have, like, some all-stars. You need to have the people, you know, some better personalities and maybe trim it down by 10 minutes. The, the only reason the intermission stands out like that, because the next two undercard fights went the distance. Yeah, they did. Yeah, you know, that's true. And then, you know, with part two, and, and surprisingly, I didn't think those two would go the distance, you know. Um, exactly. Yeah, the first one was Danny Ramon versus Juan Carlos Payano. Now, I mean, we all talk about it. We, I mean, we're all we're all pretty high on Danny Ramon. Danny Ramon was a highlight for Matchroom when he was on there. I mean, dude fought two fight of the years on there and won extremely good fight, you know. Yeah. And so, so it's like you know he, he you know he gets released by them and he's on, he's on a he's on, he's on a PPC pay per view so like oh he's gonna show out he's gonna show people what he, he, what they've been missing if they didn't watch the game. Oh, I definitely thought that, and I'm like, okay, well, Piano was probably ruined by Monster and the Cheater, so <laughs> Roman should just pick up the pieces. Exactly, but surprisingly, Piano came in there. First of all, he came there ripped. Like, dude was in really good condition. Yeah, he was. Yeah, and and I thought Roman was too, but it, it seemed like Piano had a little extra pep in his step and was giving uh, giving Roman so much trouble, like outworking him. Like he uh, he basically was beating him to fight, and Piano was the older guy. Yeah, I, I I remember. I'm like watching the like three rounds in, and I'm like I text LB. I'm like, since when was Piano this defensively sound? I don't remember him ever being this good defensively. Not, not only that, but he was throwing like sharp hard punches. Like it's like the defense and the offense got a booster shot. Like like I can't remember Piano uh, Piano um, looking that on point. Yeah, no, like I mean, I, I'm actually like he's one, and he's usually like he's 
he kind of roughs people up to win. Like he, he, he kind of struggles a little bit, but he can win. Like this one, like he was looking like he was looking like world class. Like yeah, like he was looking like like a, a blue like a, a, a blue collar prospect. Like you're like okay, uh, if he passes this fight, then you know he gets a title shot. Like yeah, exactly. And and then that's what made all the fuckery worse because like the copy bots kind of like Piano landed more punches on Piano by over like a hundred than Roman. Like you know, like he was he was accurate and everything. And Roman had to like I mean he was down in his car like big time. I was like I was like damn like this is like you, you go you go sign the PBC and you're about to get upset. I mean Roman to his credit he did he, he did try to rally though. And he even did score that knockout in which they didn't count, which the ref kind of fucked up on. Like, yeah, yeah. ref fucked up on that. That was a fuck up. Yeah. Major fuck up, because it would have really felt like, if that would have went through, it would have really felt like Roman, you know, just barely, you know, got the win. But right. it's, it's the win anyway, and we're like, eh. Yeah, but, it, it, but you now, I mean, they gave the fight to Roman, but all three judges scored that shit 116-112. There was not a 116-112 for Danny Ramon in this fight. And I like Danny Ramon. Like, but there was literally like, I mean, I mean, you'd have you'd be hard pressed to give him six rounds in this yeah, fight. Yeah, like honestly, that fight felt more like a draw. Yeah, I was gonna say the PBC draw. No, I gave it I I had it one fifteen. I just see Payano winning though. Like, yeah, yeah. I had it one fifteen. I had it one fifteen, one thirteen for Payano. Yeah. I don't like how he winky the, the last round though. I think that hurt him. Yeah, he yeah, he definitely did winky the last round, but even then, she still shouldn't have been enough. Yeah, yeah but you you know the game, you fight every round like it's you know your life and titles on the line and shit. You can't, you know, especially when you're the under, you know, you're the underdog, you're the B side, you're the older fighter, you know. Right. Especially he looked yeah. that good early. I, I know he couldn't be thinking like, well, you know, you you've been just giving this guy shellacking. Just go out there and just have fun the last round. No, damn it. Almost yeah. felt like he was tired. Like, like Roman's combos were getting at him. Yeah, I think we're working with it because Roman, yeah, Roman has some is an underrated body puncher. Like, dude will light you up to the body, you know, before he starts going, before he starts going to the head. Like, you know, and that, 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 that's basically how he's got like most of his stoppages in like in his last like four or five fights or so. Dude, dude is very good with that. Um, but yeah, I don't know what went wrong with his plan. Like, I mean, it probably gave him a lot more trouble than I thought he would. I mean, and that's not a good thing because I think Roman's beating better fighters than Payano now. So it's like, I haven't been the last time I was just surprised by a guy giving somebody that much trouble was Chavez Jr. and Jacobs. Yeah, you know, yeah, that was some. I mean, Chavez Jr. had some goals, you know, had some fucker, but there's no way he should have won as many clean ones as he did off Jacobs. You know, <laughs> you know. I mean, he won at least like three clear rounds, which is weird. Uh, so I mean, but you know, Roman. Uh, but I have a feeling like you are know, doing good because obviously PBC. You know, we mentioned it before. Jacob like City. they're trying. To... Oh, what was that LB? Was no, that no, LB? It's like your connection was fucking up. I could barely hear you. What you saying? Oh. Yeah, I would say it's like I mean, but I mean, I can see why they would give Roman the win because obviously they're trying to build up a certain fight. You know, based on who would win in the next fight, which I, you know, which is Luis Neri versus Aaron Alameda. Yeah, that's the only reason they gave it to him, which is kind of some bullshit, though. Yeah, and and then they and, and there was even some more bullshit in this one. Now, everyone, I mean, I thought this was the only fight on this card that I thought was kind of mid because it was the only car, it was the only fight that was scheduled before COVID. And I thought, okay, you know, this is just this is a showcase fight because you know, Neri, you know, Neri's a, a big puncher. So they gotta get this guy out, and you know he's gonna do his thing, and bam, you know, just go forward. Uh, but they also threw a vacant title on the line, so I'm thinking about that. Okay, this is just it's all set up. But Neri looked awful. He looked awful. He looked more awful than Roman did against Payano. Like he looked terrible in this fight. Nah, uh, I can't awful, say that. Awful. Nah, awful is kind of understated. That looks like yeah. Awful. Honestly, like. Neri didn't even look all that bad to me. Like I felt like he looked worse against Payano in his last fight. I mean that too, but I but I think I think for Neri, I think he was trying to because no, I think Neri has a new trainer, so he, he has Canelo's trainer, right? So it's just like I, I just feel like there was a style change in him that he was trying to work in, but it wasn't working. And Alameda was just boxing his head off like half the fight to me. 
Yeah, as soon as he said, fuck it, and let me just go after this guy, that's when the fight got good, and, you know, it was, like, like it really got competitive, and, and Neri did better, but when he was just trying to be, you know, back, back foot boxing and cute and shit, he was getting low-key lit up. Yeah, he, yeah, he was like his head was getting snapped back and everything like that. You know, I'm just thinking to myself like, man, Elevator is not Elevator is not a joke. You know, and it's like, and even then, I think, like I said, now I do, I, I will say this, Neri, if he won, he probably won like a one fifteen, one thirteen type of fight. You know, it, it, it wasn't, it wasn't, it wasn't like a wide win, or it could even be a draw. Even. Yeah, there was no one eighteen, one ten here. Hell no, hell no, fucking no. Yeah. Yeah. 118 means that they fill out this card and like you know as long as he doesn't get knocked out we don't have to show Man, this that shit. scorecard kept just that that score 118 110 just terrorized that card that whole card that, that number would always show up like 118 yeah. 110 like hold on i just seen a could go either way type of fight yeah yeah only julie letterman actually scored that shit you know correctly with, with 115 113 the other score is 116 oh, it was just surprising when when Julie Letterman has the best has the best card of, of the fight. Hmm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That, that says something. But but low key Julie Letterman's cards don't be all that bad sometimes. But when they're bad, they're really bad. Yeah, that's but... the thing. When they're when they're bad, they're like egregiously get the fuck out of here. Like one level below C.J. Ross bad. Right. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I ain't seen the uh, Adelaide Bird level. Yeah. Yeah, no, no, no one can be as bad as her, you know. <laughs> yeah, she's a disgrace. Uh, but you know, but Alameda, I'm actually more impressed with Alameda than I was with Neri. Alameda seemed to have a chin. Like, I mean, Neri has power, you know. And Alameda did, didn't take a step back. Like, he took that shit and kept it kept him pushing. Like, he wasn't even close to even going down in that fight, you know. So, I mean, hey, I mean, I yeah, hope he Al- took all those shits. Yeah, I hope Alameda can, you know, they, he gets another shot. Like, I mean, low key. 122 right now is a division that's about to explode right now. Like, and especially on the PBC end, like they got major talent at that weight. Like there, there's, there's, there's a lot of prime talent going on at that weight right now. Uh, you know, so like Alameda, like his stock rose to me in this fight. Neri, you know, let, let's, I mean, we're, we're going to get a Neri, yeah, Danny Roman fight. And I'm sure it, it, it's a major fight and, and it's a good fight on paper. Now, we're gonna see. If, we'll see if we actually lived up to it, based off these, you know, and hopefully it's better than both their performances from last night. Yeah, well, fuck that cheater. <laughs> it, it would be you know, if Neri does pop dirty for that, you know, anything like that, and it's like, you know, and then all of a sudden it's like, hey, the belt's free again. You know, what do you do? Do you? Well, I mean, obviously, I think I would probably get rid of him if he did pop dirty. Like he wouldn't, he wouldn't be on BBC anymore. I'm sure of that. <laughs> oh man, though. But um, but now, of course, we get to the like, we get to the main event, the significant fight where we have Jamel Charlo, you know, with his WBC belt facing Jason Rosario for his IBF and WBA uh, welterweight belts. Very rare three belt unification. And it was and it was, and it was nice that they actually mentioned Winky Wright in the broadcast. I thought like they, they didn't, you know, they they gotta make sure they you know at least mention his name at least once in there. Um, now the fight though, I mean the fight was, I mean it kind of played out two different ways. I mean there was a first round knockdown, but I don't I don't I don't, I, I, I go back and forth of where whether or not it's a knockdown or not. I didn't think it was the actual knockdown. I just think that dude lost his footing, and you know because I don't think or. I mean, he got grazed, I guess, but I didn't think he that got, he, he got grazed, but didn't look like it was all that serious. Yeah, but it was it was on the top of the head, Temple. Yeah, it was. So it those, was. It don't have to be a hard shot to to knock you down on that. Yeah, no. yeah. I was like, yeah. Charlo throw with so much fucking force, like. Yeah. Oh yeah. He, yeah. He was like. He was like room. Like he. Was like, he yeah. He he kind of like exploded. I was just like, oh shit. Like you know. He's not. He's not fucking around. He's like. He's trying to send this dude out on a stretcher type of type of deal. Um, but then after that, though, I think Rosario got. You know, was starting to settle down a little bit. And Rosario definitely. Gave, excuse me. Definitely gave Jamel some issues with the size of how he was moving forward. Like I know those body shots that Rosario was la- uh, that Rosario was landing was definitely affecting him too. Because I think there were points in that where I thought Charles was just a little bit skittish. 
because he felt because you know for Darius Carr, like you could hear his power, like you can hear him, like you could hear, like it was audible. I was like, damn, like they're really throwing some heat at each other. Um, and then was it there was a was there a knockdown in the fourth round too, right? Was it the fourth round? I'm just trying to think, it was fourth or fifth? Because there were three knockdowns in the fight. Uh, three or four. You know, and I think at least the second, the second knockdown though was actually a lot cleaner though, hell of a lot cleaner. And yeah. dude, dude was hurt. Dude was hurt as fuck. <laughs> oh shit! Yeah, but uh, but nothing like nothing like the final knockdown. The final knockdown was just like what? I was thinking, what the hell just happened? <laughs> Yo, he did the stomach, the jab high, jab low. Yeah. <laughs> And, and, and I said I thought I didn't think much of it. Like I mean, I mean, I, I mean, we seen Kovalev drop, you know, stop, stop people with, with a body with jabs. No, I should look like it hurt. Like, like I don't know that 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 straight piston like jab to the fucking stomach. Ugh, not fun. Yeah, no, but Rosario's reaction, like Drew's on the ground having a fucking seizure. Like, you know, I've never seen that reaction. Yeah, I thought like, I was watching Alien. I thought someone was gonna <laughs> was that- Oh, pop out his stomach. <laughs> start running around the ring, and and then Carlo has to box that. Like I don't know, that would have been dope. I mean, <laughs> I mean, like, I can see some Prometheus shit popping off. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, dude was I just mean, who, who else? Who else at one fifty four for him to fight? <laughs> <laughs> oh man, yo, that. But uh, that knocked down like I mean, I was like, man, I mean, I thought I thought maybe like he like roll over at least, like you know, if it was a body shot. But dude was just on his back convulsing, and I'm like, I, I said, if I was the ref, I probably would just wa- I wouldn't even give him a count. I would have just waved that shit off, like you know, ain't no, you're not supposed to. <laughs> that that was just too weird to me, you know. But he got he got the job done, you know, and you know, Jamel Charlo unifies the three belts and it's definitely. You know, he's definitely should be on anybody's pound for pound, a top ten pound for pound list. Seriously, you know. Yeah, yeah. but I thought Ros- Rosario did a good job boxing with uh, Jamel. Um, had yeah, a well, gun I mean, shy. yeah, I, I mean, fucking, I, I told LB this. Like, Derek James is like, has sullied Jamel Charlo's boxing. Like, literally, it was just like, okay, lazy jab, circle around for like two minutes, one, two, circle around for another minute. I'm just like, what the fuck is he doing? Like, he just waiting to hit you with a big shot. Like, like it doesn't seem like male boxes at all. So, yeah. like, when I, when I, I know going into this, I said Rosario and, would and, give him a, a good fight. Left, and a wild ass left hook. So, it was, it was circle around, throw, throw the jab, circle around, lazy one, two, circle around, uh, wide left hook, rinse and repeat. Yeah. <laughs> uh, you know, it was just, it, it, like, Mel, Mel, just, he's not going to outbox nobody, man. He's just going to get to, he's going to pile up hurting punches just like the trout fight like yeah. the knockdowns is what kind of saved them in that fight mm-hmm. and yeah. with rosario if rosario had trout's toughness then you know maybe that fight ends up being different but you know like i said his hands and technique start you know getting sloppy start getting lowered as the fight goes on and then yeah, well, was- he's a He's a he's a he's a terrible stat pattern, that's for sure. <laughs> <laughs> hey, for real, hey, before you know it, it's like you know, Jamel just keeps doing what he does, and it's like the openings go get bigger and bigger, and then boom, he just firing proton cannons and bombs at your ass, and mm-hmm. Rosario just ain't durable enough. Like, and and low key, like Charlo did work the body, but that's the only consistent shit he really did. Right. Yeah. Other than that, like he was damn at that moment he would be looking lost sometimes. And I'm just like, damn nigga, just you know, stick out the jab like your bro. Like the fuck. <laughs> Make it easier on yourself. You know, but yeah, like damn. Yeah, but I guess I mean he, he, he just has that confidence in his power now. You know, it's just like too know, much hey. fucking confidence. Yeah. 
Yeah, but it's gonna be like who's actually going to I mean, obviously going forward, I mean, he has mandatory coming up, but it's just like I mean, eventually he's gonna run into someone that can, you know, A that's as durable, A that punches just as hard as him or even harder. You know, but I mean I mean right now, I mean let's see he is the he is the he is the top dog at one fifty four. He's the man at one fifty four right now. Yeah, definitely uh pound for top ten, pound for pound as well. Yeah. Yeah, you give it to him. You know, and, and, I don't think you know, we ain't have to give him. He he, he low key took that. Mm-hmm. You know, Agree. And, and and the funny thing too is I saw I saw people that were still trying to downplay their you know th- that accomplishment too for some odd reason. But then I go, like, but I understand though. Try the Charlos rub people the wrong way for certain people. But it's like you just seen the man. Yeah, just, but I mean, no matter how much they get under their under your like under your skin, you shouldn't you know. You can't disregard what he's done, what either of them have done. Yeah, like, you you got to be right. objective, man. Every, every boxer we talk about, we don't have to have some damn man crush and love him to death. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. But you got to respect the skills and your company. Uh, you, 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 don't gotta be dropping, you don't got to be dropping lion emojis under their Instagram comments, but damn, like, give them their props. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> exactly. <laughs> I mean, hey, everybody know I'm not the biggest damn Canelo or Ward fan or, or Terrence Crawford, but I, I can't sit here and say them guys can't box their asses off. Yeah, pretty much. So it's like, you know, give give Charlo his due. He took on a young guy who only had one loss, who came off a big victory, and he kind of did, did some never-before-seen shit and took him out of there. Like, it is what it is. Like, I felt he was the more dangerous guy than Durianchenko was. And it showed a little bit, but Darren Chenko just, you know, he's tough and battle tested and uh, he still lost Rosario. You know, we all knew somebody was going to lose by KO in this fight. Right. So, I mean, and it was the guy that has been knocked out before. Surprise. <laughs> <laughs> it, it, it is what it is. Um, I like to see Mel get in there with... um. <clears throat> I don't know, like uh, maybe the winner of the WBO uh, fight that's gonna come up. Basically, yeah. yeah. That's what you need. That, that, else. Nobody else. Like her got to get built up. Somewhere. Yeah. Then, then move up to one sixty. Yeah, I don't know what they're doing with Michael Soro. So I mean, yeah. I mean, honestly, I don't think uh, honestly moving up will probably wouldn't be in the way for him until the one sixty situation gets a little freed up. Like, uh, like literally, like the. Yeah, I mean, honestly, there's more for him at 154 right now for the next couple of years than there's at 160, unless unless those Canelo belts become free. Yeah, because 160 is looking like a TV series where they just crammed in too many celebrities or stars and they don't know what to do with their plots or anything. Like, the storylines are all discombobulated. Right. You don't need to bring Jermel in there and then had the same shit happening again so nah well yeah i mean jamal himself is just trying just now trying to dig himself out after like two years of you know of just being like almost a non-factor at that and at that beating way. up guys jamel should have been fighting right <laughs> like hogan yep. and, and brandon i <laughs> exactly you know but, it's, you know overall like like i thought the card was good though I mean, I know I'm trying to, you know, wrap this shit up for time's sake, but uh, what, what yeah. y'all overall think of the card? Like, A, B, C, like, D, like, what y'all give it? A minus. Yeah, I'll, I'll give A minus. Only because the two fights in the part two were yeah, kind the, of the, slow. The, if, if the pacing was better for the second half, I probably would have given it an A, honestly. Yeah. Yeah. I could see, I, I agree with an A minus. I could fuck with that. You know, you know, but I, I but I, I definitely like, <coughs> excuse me, the amount of effort that was uh, that was put into this card, though uh, the matchmaking and everything like that. I mean, I, I respect it. Like, I mean, they put they, they even put their their matchmaking hats on, and I, and I was impressed. Dude, do your job if you're gonna be charging motherfucker seventy five dollars for a glorified Don King or or PBC card from six years ago. Right. <laughs> like, you know, at least at least do that. Do your due diligence on that. Cause I still feel like this is a fifty dollar card. Cause if, if you would have paid fifty dollars for it, you would have felt like you got over your value. Seventy five, you just you got your value. <laughs> if that makes yeah. sense. Yeah, I mean, I mean, I I paid for it. I mean, but I I, I don't regret it. That's what I mean. That's the worst thing. Like, yeah. if I, like there are people that I bought that I regretted, uh, but I don't regret this one. 
was like, yeah, which is which is signs of a, a good pay per view when you don't regret it. So yeah. at least at least they did that. So I, I give them that. BC. Yeah. So yeah, PBC. Thumbs up. Good job. <laughs> yeah. Oh man, and then I guess now, well, and, and you know it's a, you you know it's a thumbs up when Pat is giving it. It's giving PBC a thumbs up. Yes. When, when, when I mean, just I mean, I mean, thumbs up, that's like two thumbs up. Yeah. Yeah, because like I said, I mean, the, one, the main thing to complain about is the matchmaking. If you give me matchmaking, you give me you give me fights that they're supposed to be making, I you know I won't say anything. It, it, you know, it has to be consistent. You know, now if, if it's not consistent and I get some bullshit that I know that's it's gonna make me mad, then you know I say something about it. <laughs> True. Word, word. You know, but uh, I mean.